even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. I won't talk about never would have made it. Never would have made it. This time last year, I was recuperating from a very serious illness that almost took my life. I was literally caught up between life and death. And the tug could have pulled me one way or the other. And to be honest with you tonight, I almost didn't make it. A few weeks ago, Marvin Sapp came to this place in concert and he sang a very helpful hit song that he has recorded entitled, Never Would Have Made It. I began to think about that night, all of the things that I've experienced this year long, and memories began to flood my mind. And somebody's here tonight that testify with me. That started out at the first part of the year, it looked like you wasn't going to make it. But you're here tonight as a living testimony that the God we serve is able to help you. Have you ever thought about how much you never would have made it through if it had not been for the Lord? Would you take a few minutes and recall some of the situations and circumstances that you have to testify that if it hadn't been for God, I wouldn't have been able to come through it. And to be honest, we haven't come through everything. But everything that you've come through, you ought to be able to tell the Lord, thank you. I mean, if you were honest tonight, if you were serious tonight, if you would just get real tonight, if the Lord would not have brought you out, if the Lord would not have brought you on, if the Lord would not have brought you over, you never would have made it. Why don't you high five somebody and tell them, I never would have made it. I mean, when I think about... Uh, been sick, never would have made it. Been broke, never been have made it. Been bereaved, never would have made it. Been tossed, never would have made it. Been tempted, never would have made it. Been tested, never would have made it. But thank God tonight, I can testify with that other Marvin and simply say, I, 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 I made it because I had a God on my side. Now, if you were like me, if you would have listened to some family members, you never would have made it. If you would have listened to some people that were in your family, you, you wouldn't even be here tonight. If you would have listened to some of your friends, you wouldn't have made it. And the reality is, if you would have listened to some church folk, some church member, you... You wouldn't have made it, but somehow or another, you had a night as a living testimony that whatever you're going through, the operative word is through. Tell somebody, I'm going through. If you would have listened to the doctor's diagnosis instead of the Lord's report, you wouldn't have made it. If you would have looked and counted your cash instead of counting on Christ, you wouldn't have made it. If you would have looked at what the lawyer said instead of what the Lord said, you, you wouldn't be out tonight. But you can testify that because of the power of God, God has allowed you to make it anyhow. Even in this place tonight, you've endured some things. You have encountered some things. But tell somebody, I done escaped some stuff too. 
If I was in Arkansas, one of those old senior saints would say right about right now, if it wasn't for the Lord. Matter of fact, Caroline Skates would haul out right about now, nobody but the Lord. And that's what David is trying to make crystal clear by the pinning of this psalm on parchment that it had been nobody but the Lord. And it helped him make it through all of the terrible trials and the turbulent times that he had encountered and endured. Here in this 40th number of psalms, it's a messianic psalm. It's a psalm pregnant with possibility. Even though there's an argument as to when he wrote it, it's, it's not important the when of the writing. It's important that he wrote it. Some say he wrote it while he was running from Saul. Others say he wrote it while he was fighting off Adonijah and Absalom who were trying to take over his kingdom. Others said that he wrote it at a very critical and crucial time of his life when he found himself fighting with some enemies. It doesn't make any difference when he wrote it. Thank God tonight. He wrote it. Because really in actuality, you too might find yourself in a similar situation. Now, this psalm is a wonderfully encouraging psalm. As a matter of fact, if you showed up tonight with anything going on in your life, tell somebody, this one's for you. Because if you don't watch it, your past troubles can become your present trials, and you're going to need this one. Because if you don't watch it, Satan will make you think that God is not on your side, that it's your situation is beyond God's ability, God's desire, God's resources. David says, I'm trusting in God. I'm depending on his presence. I'm depending on his protection. I'm depending on his providence. And really, how many times do I have to remind you that we've got a God with past performance portfolio? And David says in this Psalms, he said, personally, I waited. That's personal. He says, I waited patiently on the Lord. In the Hebrew text, it says, in waiting, I waited. It literally says, I waited and I waited and I waited and I waited, implying that the Lord didn't come when he first called, but he kept on calling. And I really could get off right there tonight because some stuff can happen in your life where you have to just keep on calling on him. You just got to keep on calling on him. It looks like he has forgotten all about you and you just got to keep on calling on him. And you discover this, the more you call him, the better you feel. Just go and holler out Jesus right now because we've got to learn how to wait on the Lord. Now, the emphasis of this text is really not on patience the emphasis of this text is really on a person the emphasis is not on literally I waited but on the law and you ought to underline that because you can wait on some people and they never show up anybody had some experiences this year where you've been waiting on somebody and they never showed up but the good news is the Lord will show up there are some situations where I don't care how you want other people to help you, they can't help you. But here, David says, I waited patiently on the Lord. Now, if you wait on him, if you wait, he'll work. Good news. I say again, if you wait, he will work. Because there are times when nobody else will do, nobody else can do, when nobody but the law can handle what you're going through. And some things in your life are designed simply to make you wait. There are some things that happen to you. God is just testing you, trying you, seeing whether or not you mean all that stuff on Sunday, on Monday. You holler out on Sunday, I'm waiting on you, Lord. He said, all right, let me see. Talk with me if you please. You remember Mar Mary and Martha, they were waiting on Jesus. And the word says he already knew what he was going to do when he got there anyway. 
And so every now and then God makes us wait because he already knows what he's going to do when he gets there. Now we've got to admit tonight that waiting is difficult. I don't care how you look at it, to wait on anything is difficult. If you're waiting on a ride, when they going to come? If you're riding in a car, when we going to get there? If in the beauty shop or the barber shop, when they going to get through? Talk with me, somebody. If you're sitting on an airplane, when this thing going to take off? Because waiting is difficult. Because most of us look at waiting as inactivity, when in reality, it's not being inactive. It's just trusting God to come through. And what you discover about God, God is never late. He's always early. Make me feel like it tonight. And sometimes we're like little kids in the back of the car, just taking off from the house, going on a two-mile, rather a 20-mile trip, and we're just taking off from the house, and we ask, are we there yet? The reality is God doesn't work by your clock. And you've got to watch trying to preempt the providence of God with your own plans. Because you're unwilling to wait on what he's going to do. You remember Genesis chapter 16 when Abraham and Sarah gave birth to their own problem by the name of Ishmael. Because there's some situation you give birth to your own stuff. Simply because you refuse to wait on God. And so you get mad at everybody else, but turn around and tell somebody, you gave birth to that. You lost your job because you wouldn't go to work on time. You gave birth to that. You lost your house because you stayed at the casino, baby. You gave birth to that. Somebody walked out on you and found somebody else. Well, when they were there, you wasn't there. You gave birth to that. Preach Marvin White. You got to watch what you give birth to. Help me if you please. Because you won't simply wait on the law. David said, literally in the Hebrew text, I waited and I waited and I waited and I waited. And when I got through waiting, I kept on waiting. But I just wasn't waiting on my neighbor. I was waiting on the law. And since I know him like I know him, I don't know when he's going to show up. But I know he's going to show up. And I know 